by just one cent. Woolies maintaining its sales and earnings guidance for fiscal 2010, saying Australian consumers are frugal. Its chief executive, Michael Luscombe, telling shareholders at its AGM in Sydney today that the company entered its fiscal year in an optimistic mood, but is facing uncertainties, such as rising interest rates. He says the change in customer behaviour is being driven by tough conditions on the back of the global downturn. Sales for the fiscal 2010 year are expected to be in the upper single digits, excluding petrol, and net profit after tax should grow in a range of 8 to 11%. Woolies, from the um, analysis that we get here on this show, the theme seems to be, hey, it's a well-run business, it's a good business. But it, it's interesting to see it shares up by just one cent when we've heard from Harvey Norman lately saying, hey, we're expecting record Christmas sales. Shares in JB Hi-Fi, like we mentioned before, doing well and hitting a 52-week high today. Do you think the market was expecting more from Woolies and what's your take on the company? Um, well, the, the value of this business has risen from less than $5, it's, it's, its intrinsic value has risen from less than $5 uh, back in 2000 uh, to a value today, value now of about, uh, well actually its value today is about $24 or thereabouts and its value will continue to rise probably out to 2011 to about $29 or $30 but the price today and the price recently has reflected that mm. um, and so so what you've got is a, is a is a share price which is factoring in an optimistic scenario in terms of the future valuation of this company so there's a little upside there. I've mentioned it on the show here that I like the company, I think it's well run, I think it's got a great return on equity, enormous cash flow. Um, what you really want is a business with big equity uh, and big returns on equity and then your value goes through the roof um, this business has done exactly that its value keeps rising every year um, but the price has looked well ahead and is now factoring that in okay really quickly want to talk about some media stocks uh, we saw News Corp up by at least 0.72 of a percent uh, the 10 network also up by 0.6 UBS reviewing the media sector saying the ad market is improving although there's some caution heading into the holiday season the broker believes Fairfax, APN and Seek offer the greatest potential for positive earning surprises. UBS has a buy on Fairfax, APN and Ofstar seeing the greatest value there. It retains a sell on West Australian News and a neutral recommendation on 10 saying those stocks look expensive. UBS continues by saying while Fairfax and APN remain structurally challenged, consensus upgrades should help unlock value and highlight earnings that are cyclical leverage to an improving economy. Do you like media stocks? Uh, they're expensive and if you own newspapers uh, remember something that Warren Buffett said recently he wouldn't buy a newspaper now at any price okay let's talk about Fairfax um, I, I hear what the broker has said um, my predictions or if you like my valuations are based on longer-term outlooks for these businesses um, Fairfax Fairfax profit today is less than it was five years ago and the growth in its profits over the last decade has only been about three percent Okay, so that aside, um, its return on equity has dropped from 15.5% uh, in 2000 to 4.6% this year. Now, that's the same return you can get on money in the bank mm. on a term deposit guaranteed by the government, no risk. Okay, so if, you're only, if you've got a business that's only getting 4.6% or thereabouts, then you've really got to question a $3.6 billion intangible on the balance sheet, which is the mastheads, um, including uh, $2.3 billion of accounting goodwill, which is from the purchase of other businesses. So if you're only generating a return that, that's the same as what you can get in a bank, yet you're saying these businesses have this goodwill, this accounting goodwill on the balance sheet, I would guess that the $543 million we saw in, um, in impairments to goodwill this year, well, there's probably more to come. Mm. Uh, and so I know what analysts will do. They'll say, well, that's a one-off, you know, that's an abnormal and we won't worry about that. But in actual fact, these aren't good businesses anymore. Fairfax has a lot of work and Roger Corbett has a lot of work cut out to change the direction of this business. Okay. Let's quickly check on the stocks that hit a 52-week high. A few of them did and uh, they include Aquila Resources, BHP Billiton hitting a 52-week high and over the next page, as we mentioned, JB Hi-Fi, but I do want to talk about BHP expecting Chinese growth to continue to grow strong, with Chief Executive Marius Kloppers calling the resilience of the steel sector surprising. Because of that, Mr Kloppers says the miner will continue to focus on meeting China's needs, while still restocking is picking up in some major markets. He says the US and Europe are proceeding with caution. Mr Kloppers told shareholders at the company's AGM in Brisbane that BHP will emerge from the global recession slower than in previous cycles. He also expects to make a decision on whether to sell or restart the mothballed Ravensthorpe nickel mine in WA sometime in the near future. 
Also at the AGM, shareholders are told BHP's iron ore production joint venture with Rio in WA is likely to become binding before the end of the year. The mining giants are aiming to convert the joint venture agreement into a binding deal to share facilities by December 5th. But of course, what everyone is talking about, or the market is speculating, is whether or not BHP will instead make a full takeover bid for Rio Tinto. What do you think? BHP is, is a sensational business. Uh, its return on equity uh, is almost 30%. On, you know, it's one of the biggest companies in the world. You compare that to Rio, Rio's return on equity, and I've got it here, bear with me, um, is, is in the order of 15%. It has a lot more debt. It also has a lot more intangibles or goodwill. Its value, Rio's value this year is, is $43, next year $50, and the year after $57. But the price is circa $70. If BHP were to buy Rio, it would be a little bit like trading Don Bradman for an under-11 cricket player. Getcha. You know, wh why do that? I don't understand unless it's for glory or for, you know, or for ego. Mm. Um, I don't know why you would dilute a great business to buy something, particularly at this price, um, that that is going to is going to reduce your performance. The more you pay, the lower your return on equity. Obviously, um, that's going to dilute the return on equity um, for Rio. Uh, I suspect down the track they'll make it work, but there'll be a, a big period of indigestion if they went for it now. Okay, I'm glad we've got just enough time for a quick viewer question because uh, the viewer emailed us directly to ask you a question. That viewer is uh, Peter. Peter saying, if you buy following Buffett's rules of low debt, high return on equity, and below intrinsic value and the stock does well when do you sell okay there's four or five reasons for selling if you follow that Buffett approach um, one of the reasons that you would one of the reasons that you might sell is that the price is well above the value and we've been talking about a lot here on the show the price if the price is if you have to wait two or three years for the value to catch up with the price what's well, probably gone too high um, so that might be a reason you sell um, if if management does something dishonest or not in the best interest of shareholders they make a big overpriced acquisition that's another reason to sell if return on equity drops if the prospects become uh, less favorable for that business then there are all reasons that you might actually sell the business uh, if they take on a lot of debt or dilute you another reason there's a whole bunch um, and uh, and without giving too much away I've actually just written a I've just finished writing my book um, and, and I've written a, a chapter on exactly that. Right. So there's five reasons to sell. I've covered four of them and there's one more. Aren't you a good marketer? <laughs> you know, Roger, I appreciate your time on Market Moves today and for the year because I think this is your last um, uh, appearance on this, sh on this show for the year anyway. So right. thank you very much. Oh, it's a pleasure. Roger Montgomery from rogermontgomery.com. Any questions or comments you have, you can send them to marketmoves at skynews.com.au. This is what moved the markets today. I'm Richard Goncalves, but do stick around. We've got plenty more coming up next here on the Sky News Business Channel.